All right, of course I was uh, futzing with these and put them to the test. And uh, as I'm tightening this, I realized I must have had super strong hands and I need to tighten those nuts some more in the back. So back to plan B version two is I bought these things and the nuts are one inch. This is like one in <laughs> one in one thirty second. So I'm going to cut this open, hopefully be able to fit that, you know, reach inside that little hole, fit it around that uh, mixture, uh, throttle and mixture cable, and then tighten it with a little bit of leverage to get on there. Like, literally got to make my own tool. Somebody else was asking if I wire tied, safety tied the top of those, and I did. You can see them there. And I also beveled the uh, back edge, edge formed, you know, just bent it down so these don't chafe on a sharp edge. And then I put a little tie together here. Um, so, yeah, gonna do that. A little cutting, grinding, and welding later, I have the perfect tool to tighten your nuts. This is for the little nut, this is for the big nuts. And it works. So, yeah, you can literally, in our case, we have a little door there that uh, I can take the drawer out. So, you can get that around the nut from the back side. It's one inch, and you can literally uh, get some really good leverage on it. So now, all the nuts are tight. And uh, hopefully, A, I don't lose these, and B, I remember I have them, or find them where they are when we need to take it apart. So what else have I done since then? Um, finished this, George wired it. I don't know if I talked about that already. It was a few days ago. And then I spliced in a couple of the trim wires per his instructions. Um, I did this, Molex plugs. These are for the heated seat modules. And did uh, little smaller Molex plugs for USB. One goes to the charger inside the center console and the other one is going to go for the wireless charger. I haven't quite finished that yet. I kind of put that project on hold. And then I started playing with uh, putting the top of the boot cowl on and you can see I brought the windshield up and I bought these vents. My brother actually found them. So I like the idea of putting that with, this is the piece that bolts underneath it, except I'm going to shorten this and put a very low profile fan on it just to kind of keep air moving hot air out of there and also air moving across the windshield. That's pretty cool. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna try and figure out a way to incorporate the GPS antenna. So finally a change of scenery from the wiring and uh, still uh, George is on a business trip but when he gets back, we gotta finish that uh, little section there. And uh, then the wiring I believe is done other than some odds and ends and the lights I talked about earlier up here. Um, but that should be interesting up there. But. Um, yeah, just a little update. See ya. Meridine, I guess, is the company that makes these uh, little fans. So it comes with a whole kit. This is that little vent I want to put on the uh, cowl, on the dash, on the boot cowl, on the inside, the froster vent. Um, so it comes with that. Comes with a big piece, a Y. But really, all I'm interested in is uh, is, is these these pieces. I'm gonna mount one underneath. So I shortened this one, I basically just chopped it off and I made these little adapter rings and basically glue that to that and then bolt the fan directly to the bottom of that. Um, these fans are pretty standard, they're I think 50 millimeter bolt pattern and 60 by 60 millimeter uh, fan so you can accommodate any kind of fan. I did buy some real ones uh, from Digikey, Sanyo or something. 40,000 hour lifespan, so <laughs> uh, they'll probably last. And right now I'm working on this part here. So I was trying to figure out where they work best so you can access them. There's gonna be a pad over this, and my thinking is that the screws that hold this in will also hold the pad in. The pad is gonna come when I say pad, it's just going to be very thin padding to hide the rivets that are uh, used here because I don't think I can do flush rivets on all of this. And then I'm going to make a little lip, like my own thing that incorporates the light 
underneath like the eyebrow light and, and kind of clips on it. I haven't figured that out, but right now I'm trying to figure out the best position here. So I kind of use the angle that this is at. Originally a 90 degree angle off of that, but there was a little discrepancy. So I just averaged them and then make sure underneath there's a uh, space and basically the fan will be here and I'll just suck hot air out. It's as simple as that. So I like the looks of this. Um, the windshield cowl comes all the way up to here. So there's plenty of room to get a, a screwdriver, or at least an angled screwdriver. And, and I'm also working on the GPS antenna. I don't want to mount it on the top. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece then put plastic over it and then actually make a bracket so it slides in from underneath. So time to get creative. All right. here plenty of room for a little fan keep the air circulating and a little defrost on the windshield bingo now I'll come up with something for the GPS sometime I got a cool idea here is what I've MacGyvered so far so I made this little uh, tray at a 0.25 same thickness as that and the idea is, is to put this underneath okay the antenna can go slide in there. There'll be like a little spring-loaded release tab. So you can literally reach in there with one hand, pull down the tab and pull the antenna out. So it'll like lock in. But I know it doesn't go through aluminum. So I don't want to sit on top of the dash. So I'm going to cut an oversized square out of here. And we're going to have padding, non-metal padding, obviously, that goes over it. And I'm going to sandwich a piece of plastic thin plastic between this and this. So the antenna, because obviously it's going through the glare shield, which is plastic, I mean, sorry, the windshield, which is plastic, um, will sit underneath there and uh, you won't see it, but it's right there, close to the apex of the windshield. I know when we do stuff in cars, they work, we found they work best closest to the uh, uh, front of the windshield. So uh, I think this is a good idea. It's coming out good. Hopefully it'll work. All right, you ready? I think this is pretty cool. Boot cowl, forward, backwards, vents. This is the little tray I made. So uh, it has like a little spring action on the bottom. That's gonna get underneath there. This is just 16th plastic. GPS can go through that. That's gonna get sandwiched between the two. Let's see if it fits. So, Yeah, we'll take this, click out into there, click out into there. Obviously these will be rivets. So that's the idea. So that, that will be the top, nice and flush. And then this will be the underneath. So you can literally reach up with one hand. This is like spring loaded. Oh, look at that. So there's your GPS antenna underneath the cover. It's there, but you can't see it. And I did leave a little bit of play, but we can uh, put a little pad on it. Uh, a little piece of foam or something. I love it. This is great. That came out very cool. Oh! In, not going anywhere, no matter how turbulent it is. Plastic on top. See the satellites? No cables to run or hide, just plug it into the back of the G5. Done. All right, cool. Now I gotta cut the other, um, the froster mat. What's cool about using the 
flat piece of sandpaper so it can show you any high spots and obviously it'll end up with a nice flat surface. And I made these little rings out of uh, eighth inch ABS. And I'm literally just gonna glue those on there with CA glue and then you can use any kind of fan and bolt it right on there. So, good stuff. Sorry, I skipped an entire day of uh, actually recording, but um, this is where we left off. I did finish these. I have matching fans coming from Digi, uh, DigiKey, Sanyo fans that are good for 40,000 hours, so that should be good. This, uh, I don't know if you saw the finished product, is uh, basically the GPS antenna holder for the G5. So once that is like upside down in the cowl, you can reach your hand up underneath and get at it. And the fans are pretty low profile. They kind of give it an automotive look. This is 1 16th inch plastic. And that whole thing is gonna go up in there. So pretty cool. George was over last night, coming back tonight, and did all of the um, connectors for the transponder and right now we are sourcing a connector like this for the audio stuff basically we want the audio jacks that come out of the center console so that's the uh, whole unit it does come out as one piece to be uh, serviceable so or removable and uh, tonight he's gonna finish or continue at least on this I'm wiring up the lights. I got um, a harness run up here for my Cybertruck light. Then I have two more, or one more run here. It's gonna be a little LED of some sort that uh, illuminates the fuel gauge. Uh, same thing on that side, that's for the fuel gauge. And then we also have an extra one for the little cockpit. OP makes a nice little cockpit light. So we're gonna be having lighting everywhere. And uh, that's it. Keep you posted. Thank you. All right, another day uh, with limited filming. It's just kind of boring. Uh, wiring, switches, pins, plugs, you name it. Uh, George was uh, here this evening and he's working on the audio jack. Got all that, uh, you know, sorry. Um, the audio box, uh, continued working on that, trying to figure out all the ins and outs for the Lima plugs, the regular headphone jacks and so on and so forth. I was busy using my little J, JWPF uh, connector. So I made these little strip LED lights. Um, they're, the wiring is permanent, but these are just kind of for testing right now. They're gonna go underneath the fuel gauge. Same with this, we got a little cockpit light from OP lights. Uh, I think they're from uh, this area in Boston. So supporting local businesses and have another light on here and I put these little connectors. These are so easy to put on that uh, if I need to change them, I can change them. I have the connector for my Cybertruck light up here. We have uh, a couple of lights up underneath here. These are basically gonna be illuminating, you know, a slight glow ambient lighting on the footwell um, along with this uh, brow light that I haven't done yet. And then we have a, a white light here. So if you turn on the cockpit lights, it's gonna be bright white and bright white. And if you turn on the dimmer lights, you're gonna have this reddish glow all over, basically for nighttime flying. So that's the plan. I think we're both pretty confident that tomorrow we can fire that up, but I'm gonna keep that excitement for the next video because I'll post this. I thank you for watching. Uh, uh, again, sorry, these are not super exciting right now, but this is what we're working on. Um, oh, I think I told you. I also put the same style connector on the, the trim motor. So we get that uh, sorted out. Um, they're nice and small, so you can fit them through. They're waterproof. I just got to fill hole number six because there's only uh, five wires. And I got to cut the little notch to have it come out there. But for now, see ya. Good night. Thanks for watching and uh, happy building. Cheers.